over $400, that's a car payment. Over $500, that's a month's rent. So why are fragrances like Creed so expensive and are they worth the money? Well, to start this off, I want to share with you a story about an expensive liquid that isn't fragrance. The liquid I'm talking about, beer, specifically Coors Beer from Golden, Colorado. You see, back in the 1970s, it was almost impossible to get Coors outside of the state of Colorado. Now, notice I said almost, because if you were a U.S. president, if you were Paul Newman, if you were Henry Kissinger, you got Coors beer whenever you asked for it, or if you're on the East Coast, you simply talk to a bootlegger, and yeah, you're going to pay three times the retail price, but you can get yourself some Coors. Now, when they interviewed Bill Coors, he's one of the owners and the chairman of the board, he had a very simple answer. Our beer is the best. But it wasn't that simple because when you speak to brewers, people outside the company, people that judge beer, they would say it's a decent beer, but it's definitely not something you should pay a premium for and it's definitely not one of the best. So was Coors the best? Was it average? And what does this have to do with expensive fragrances like Creed? The answer, gents, is in both cases, we have markets where you cannot objectively measure quality. An example of a market where you can objectively rate things is sports. When it comes to sprinting, when it comes to swimming, we have certain measures and assuming that no one is using drugs and that they're all held to the same rules and standards, we can pretty much figure out who is the fastest person, who is the second fastest person, and then on. We actually have a very clear system of ranking. Fragrance, on the other hand, is incredibly subjective. I would rate it closer to art because what one person loves, another person is going to hate. So all that being said, whether or not a fragrance is worth $100, $200, $425 comes down really to two questions. First, is the fragrance worth it to you? The second question is can you afford it? If you answered yes to both, it's an easy decision. Grab the fragrance you love. But if you're at all unsure, then you're going to love the rest of this video where I break out five reasons why expensive fragrances are worth it or why they're not. So the first thing you need to understand when it comes to fragrance and price is the marketing placebo effect. In a nutshell, human beings value things more when they pay more money for them. Now, the phenomenon is well documented, but I want to share with you guys a 2017 study in which they had participants come in and they tried bottles of wine. They knew that one wine was a $10 wine, another one was a $30 wine. And they asked people, what did you think about these wines? Well, no surprise, the $30 wine won out hands down, like nine to 10 people said, this one is so much better. It's fruity. It's got more depth. This one was a really good wine. The other one was, yeah, it was just okay. But the kicker is this. They were the same bottle of wine. They had been duped and everyone just thought the more expensive, which was really the same thing, was better. But here's where the study gets really interesting. They actually measured the brain activity. And even though it was the same wine, the people that thought they were drinking more expensive wine, they actually, the pleasure parts of their brain fired off more. So simply believing that something is better and paying more for it or thinking that you're paying more for it, you derive higher value. So, gents, that marketing placebo effect is real. The more you pay for something, the more you have to sacrifice to get it, the more pleasure you're going to draw from it when you wear it. Now, gents, I know you've got an opinion, so I want to hear from you down in the comments. Do you think expensive fragrances are worth it? Is Creed Aventus, is it, you know, overhyped or is it worth the money? What's the most expensive fragrance you've ever bought? Guys, let me hear from you down in the comments. Really quick, want to interrupt my own video here to let you know on Monday at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. over in Germany, 2 p.m. over in the UK, 5 p.m. over in Islamabad, 5.30 p.m. over in India, 8 p.m. in the Philippines, 10 p.m. in Australia. Guys, I am going live and I want to see you. Down in the description of today's video, click on that link that goes over to the live video so you can set the reminder. Because here's the thing, is that that video is not going to stay on my channel live. I'm going to go live at that time you'll be able to find the video. But after that, it's going to become unlisted. Why don't I keep these videos public? Because I want to be able to share with you guys more in an informal setting, my passions, such as fragrance. Yes, we're talking about Creed, but I know you guys have questions about clones, or maybe you're wondering, Antonio, what are you wearing today? Royal water, in case you're curious. And what are your thoughts on a lot of other Creed fragrances? Some of them, maybe were they overhyped? Other ones, no one really talks about, but they're amazing. And that's what I want to be able to talk with you guys. Just go into our passions. For us to be able to talk about fragrances, but even more, I can talk about watches, 
I've got a whole collection right here. I can talk about why some things are classic and why they're never going to go out of style. This is about you. You guys being able to go in there and ask me questions. Remember, this live broadcast is not going to be made public. You've got to go set the reminder. I'm linking to it down in the description. Go check it out, guys. Go set that reminder and I will see you Monday, okay, at the live broadcast. Let's get back to the content. Next up, let's talk about the reduction of risk. So when you pay more for something, especially in an area that you don't know a whole lot about, you feel better about it because you feel that you've reduced your risk. I know for a lot of people that seems counterintuitive. Well, I'm spending more money. But here's the thing is that we latch on to price and we associate price with quality, with what other people are choosing, with the best. Now, notice I said if you don't know a whole lot about the market, because if you do understand fragrances, you know there are tons of great fragrances out there that are incredibly inexpensive, dirt cheap, but people aren't really talking about it much. They're not getting hyped up, yet they're great fragrances that have been around for almost a century. Next up, let's talk about exclusivity. So when you buy a bottle of Creed Aventus, you become part of the club. There's not an official club, but it seems like there is online, these communities, these fragrance fanatics that are so passionate about Creed and about whether it's good or bad, and they will debate on end trying to convince you one way or the other. Another thing with exclusivity is sometimes they have limited additions. Sometimes they don't put out that many of the fragrances. So, this right here can also drive up the price and also drive up people's perceptions of whether it's good or bad. I've even talked with some fragrance collectors. This was a milestone purchase. It was something they had to save up for a long time. They only made $1,000 a month. Yeah, they know this is over $400. They wanted the real thing. So, they would put aside $25, $50 a month so that whenever they felt they were at the right point, when they had saved up the money, they went and spent it and actually got the real thing. And speaking of the real thing, let's talk about clones. I love clones. I love having options. But if you can't afford the real thing, and if you think clones are going to be fine, it's not the same. You've got to understand human psychology, and we're always going to feel like we want the real thing. Now, it's perfectly cool if you've tried Creed, if you had a little bit of Creed, and yeah, you tried that deck and you're like, nah, I really like Club de Nuit. It's stronger, it's a bit sharper. This is for me. Then all the more power to you. But if you're lying to yourself, it is something that you're always going to feel second best, and I do recommend you save up and get the real thing. And let's talk about quality. So, first up, quality ingredients. Next up, the overall presentation is going to be beautiful oftentimes in these higher end fragrances, especially in the House of Creed. Next up, the history. So, these guys have been around since 1760. And let's not forget about the overall hand craftsmanship, all the detail that goes into every process of getting this perfume to you. Now, a lot of you guys are saying, okay, what's the difference between poor quality and bad quality and how in the world can you tell the difference? So, I'll just use the example of Jasmine. So, when it comes to Jasmine, and this is again very subjective, many people consider it to be the best Jasmine coming out of France. Now, they only make so much of this stuff. Really, it's in limited supply and then we're talking this can be like $20,000 per pound of that stuff, if not more. So, it's very expensive because of limited quantity and the perception of it. Now, you've got Indian jasmine and you've got jasmine coming out of China. You've also got synthetic jasmine, which is incredibly cheap. But it's something many people, especially the experts, perceive not to be of the highest quality. Now, if something is natural, does that make it higher quality? Not necessarily, because there are certain smells that actually can only be made with, by synthetic means. And actually, when it comes to musks, we probably don't want to be killing animals for that stuff. So, the point being is overall, they're using the best quality ingredients that you can get in a higher end fragrance like this. Now, let's talk about the experience. Gents, I will say that this is something that's often overlooked with fragrances, but this is one of the only art forms I know of that you can experience really. I mean, right into your nose. I mean, you are consuming this art and it is amazing because when you were, and here's the thing, 1400 sprays in 100 mil. That's enough to wear four sprays every single day for a year. What is that worth to you? And that's something that I absolutely love about this art form is that you can, it can evoke memories, you can create memories, it can take you across time, it can take you anywhere that you remember that smell and oh wow, it's just, it's amazing. So, what do I really think of Creed Aventus? Is it worth it? 
Well, you better believe I think it's worth it. I spent my own money. I enjoy this fragrance. It was one of the first high-end niche fragrances I ever tried. I have to admit, I absolutely loved it. And I have the money to spend, so I grabbed it. Business expense for me. But I've also expanded my collection when it comes to Creed. I love their fragrances, but I also think there's a lot more affordable options out there. Ones that aren't exact clones, but have a lot in similar. And that's what I found with this hobby. It's like, yeah, you can go out there and grab the exact clones. And I do wear this on occasion, but I wear this a lot more. But I've really just discovered I love fragrances. So, once you get into this hobby, you realize the experience. You realize the quality. You kind of enjoy a little bit of exclusivity, understanding all of this stuff. And you're aware of that placebo effect, but you understand what you're getting into. I think good perfumes, good fragrances are well worth your money. So, what video to watch next? How about how to wear cologne correctly? So many guys mess this up and in this video, I show you exactly how to wear your fragrance so you can get the most life out of it so that you can smell good and not upset or offend others.